Ta-da-da! <laughs> Ta-da-da! Is it just... <laughs> Hi! What's up? Doing that is book club, and these are my legendary friends. High five, everyone! High five! I'm down here. I'm down here. Raise the roof. Oh no! Now my mod. Oh mod, you ruined it. Happening. Mod. I'm not happy about it. I'm not happy about it. It's not me, right? Okay. <laughs> I had nine. Like something I would do. We're pro you know what? This is the kind of book club we're here for. If you don't have a drink in your hand, then who? You know, cheers, everyone. Drink responsibly. Oh, yeah, any I'm kind of drink. Any anything you fancy. Anything, anything you fancy. Doesn't have to be alcoholic. Yeah, uh, I'm on the well, water train today, but whoo, that was <laughs> wild. We have a Hector Navari. We have a Rachel Hine. What's up? I'm Maud Garrett. You know, sometimes you just fall out the gate when you're trying to run real fast, but we are going to continue this in our stride. Uh, thank you for joining us. Look, if you're new to Nerdist Book Club, a big hello. We're not usually such a train wreck. We usually have our ish together. But uh, we're super excited to wrap up the fact that we have read three books, an entire trilogy, and we are closing it out on the last book as well. If you are new, say a big hello in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Let us know what kind of books you're into. This is a book club and we get a bit booky. So, oh, wow, Hector, is that the entire trilogy in your hand just there? Is that the Grisha verse? You we know it. Those. Look at that. Oh, beauty. Look at that. Wow. Look at I how. I need to buy that just to have because it's so pretty. I know. I think I want it as well. I really liked I really liked the series. We are going to wrap up the entire Shadow and Bone trilogy. It is by Lee Bardugo. If you miss out, um, if you miss out on the earlier episodes, you can actually head to Notice this YouTube channel if you're not there. And you can watch all the previous ones, part one and part two for all of the three books. Um, and then we've got a bonus episode happening this Friday, 1 p.m. PT. If you haven't heard about that yet, we're going to talk about the difference between the book and the TV adaptation. So what changes were made, what we liked about it, what we didn't like about it, how much we love of one to ten, ten, how beautiful is the darkling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ten. Yeah, cool. <laughs> so uh, just to kind of wrap up this conversation, the first question that I have for you, my lovely esteemed panelists, uh, what did you think of the Moritz Over story? Did you see that coming with Mal's lineage being the descendant? Did not see that coming. I'm the, I'm I'm reading it for the first time along with you, Maud. Mm -hmm. Rachel has read this before. I did not see that coming, but I know that we talked about in a previous episode. I think somebody brought up like, well, Mal has some sort of a incredible once in a globe power, once you know, once in a billion type of an ability that maybe we'll learn that he is some sort of a Grisha or some sort of a power user or something, some kind of a connection, some sort of fate. And it ended up kind of being true, but just in kind of a different way. So I didn't see that coming, but when it was uh, revealed, I was like, yeah, that makes sense because Mal is such a pivotal character to this to the to the fate of this world it turned out so um yeah yeah what did you think rachel well i i agree in in that that felt like an interrogation um in that uh when i first read it i thought mal was going to be grisha and involved somehow but i did not see him literally being the third amplifier nor him uh being related to Moritzova. Moritzova. Yep, Moritzova. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and I also kind I, the first time I read it, again, because I was very much, I think from the first book all the way through, my one big thing was Alina has given up power so many times and um, not really lived for herself. And so every time that she got back with Mel or, you know, now that we've read the whole book, like that her powers go away. Um, I was just like, what? <laughs> because mm -hmm. I get it. It is, um, it does at least like subvert a lot of those kinds of tropes. Um, but the first time I read it, I was like, oh, Mal's the descendant. She can't even be like, okay. But then <laughs> I don't know if this is watching the show and now being on the Mal Like I have to kind of separate them because mm -hmm. or preview of Friday, I think Mal is much better in the show than in, in the books. Um, but I see it now. And especially after 
talking with everyone about it this time on book club, I think that while I get frustrated because that's what would frustrate me if I were in this scenario, she's very different. And I think show Alina and book Alina are very different as well, um, which we will talk about, but reading it again, I was much less frustrated with some of the little details about the how. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, speaking of those details, here's a question I want to address. Game wizard 001 said, still unclear what happened after Mal sacrificed himself. How did the soldiers get sun summoning powers after that? So kind of break it down a little bit because I also want to like launch into comparisons to the show. I've seen all the eight episodes now, but we're going to save it. But mm -hmm. it, like logistically what happened there at the end, Mal sacrificed himself. And then that gave Alina that power boost because he is the sort of like, um, God, what was the word again? The amplifier amplifier. amplifier. Yeah. Uh, but then he was able to be revived. Is that what happened? That they were just using kind so of basic like clear those kinds of revival techniques. What happened? Or sort of, I think if I can yeah. try to theorize for a second. So Mal is the third amplifier by Alina stabbing him and killing him. She gets, she is the owner of that power. And when, and he, you know, dies like holding on to her and then she feels this huge rush of power and then it's gone. And the huge rush of power that Moritzova designed and, you know, kind of messed things up along the way inadvertently through all of his family stuff. Um, and, you know, being drowned for being a witch like you do. Um, mm -hmm. But that the power was to make, to, to basically actually amplify her power and give it to all of the non Grisha that that light, which was huge. That's right. That's right. Touched. That's right. So it's literally, it's like, it almost, I find it interesting because the Darkling, though very bad and does very bad things, it seems to start with this kind of flame of wanting to protect the Grisha because they've been mm -hmm. treated so horribly throughout his very long life. And I think Moritzova. 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 I don't know why that's so you just, hard. You me. just got to say it with a Russian accent. That's all. Just fake it. I know, but it. I've been getting every other one of them. <laughs> so this one is, I don't know why, but I think, I think mm -hmm. there are more extra like vowels in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. But um, he, his amplifiers, I think were to kind of, because he was also working towards, they didn't even really have Grisha types, you know, back, back in the day. And so I think, his goal was to make more people who ha perhaps had grown up without powers mm -hmm. and who had these biases and fears and, and all of that would then experience it later and discover some kind of empathy, bring people closer together, that kind of thing. Um, so that's what I think happened. And then because there, there's a little bit of discussion kind of in the epilogue about Mal and Mal being an amplifier in that there's this kind of um, more itself, a piece of his grandpappy or great, 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 great grandpappy um, kind of in him that he's inherited. And so when she kills him, she's killing that. She, she takes away his power, but just like the duck, he brought his daughter back to life and she must have somehow survived. Oh, right, right. That, that bit out. of power was like his second life. And so they, Tamar and Tolia were able to revive him as heart renders and get him going because of that. That's sort of what, I, That's what I thought, because if they could just revive dead people, they would do that. that all the time. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's kind of... And well, that I mean, he even said that where like he loses the ability, like the reason why that Moritz over and with the name, yes, scary. Like, all in there because amplifiers, she wants more, and then it's over. Uh -huh. Um, with that, uh, thank you. Um, yes, yeah, of course, you took a character's name and turned it into a pun mod. Beautiful. Nicely done. That's good. That's very good. <laughs> Well played, well played, well played. Uh, but that whole thing is the reason why he was so in tune with life and he could track is because he had mm. that life in him and like calls to like. So mm. he had that two lives in him in that way because he was the descendant. And uh, Rachel's exactly right. Once she uh, once she killed him and he died, 
um, that that extra life that he had died. So then he was just regular old male after that, and he's no longer going to be able to pass that down. So it stopped with him. Um, yeah, there you go. It wasn't exactly. Oh, yeah. interesting. And That's also, great. That's great. Someone, someone just said, oh gosh, in the chat, it was just up on the screen and my uh, brain just went totally south. But the, <laughs> oh, it was that, it was that, of, it was theory that um, his, yeah, that his power basically was connected to life. So that's why he could track all living things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it was also Thierry who made a comparison to X-Men, uh, mm -hmm. Magneto. Yes. There it is right there with uh, the first X-Men film. And also the ending of this. I want to jump ahead if it's okay, gang. Yeah, no, and, we can and, jump and around. Go and talk about the ending because we're already kind of there. But um, the ending, there's a question here. What did you think of Mal and Alina's happy ending? And I want to get into that. But also the fact that Alina lost her powers, and I guess so did Mal. Um, I got like, uh, uh, it made me think of, um, one of the bad X-Men movies, but the third X-Men film, X-Men, the last stand where a bunch of characters lose their powers. Ian McKellen's Magneto loses his powers after Kelsey Grammer sticks him with the cure and then he can't control metal. But then at the very end, they, there's a close up. It's like an inception ending and he, and he, yeah, he's messing with a chest piece and then it moves a little bit and then it cuts like, that's a great ending. And I feel like I was almost expecting that in the story where it's, it was the perspective of like the people that are working at the house as well. And they're like, oh, she goes and she kind of plays with her, her her fingers in like the sunlight sometimes. And then maybe when she gets sad, Mal, he'll take her outside and then they go and spend some time in nature and spend some time with each other. And I was half expecting there to be a little thing of like, oh, sometimes it gets lighter when she, like something to show that maybe she could still get her powers back. Uh, and I feel like the world could still do that. So I want to talk about the happy ending, but also I wanted to ask, there are other and I meant this... happy ending for those two that they get to be together, not yes. everyone who died, obviously. <laughs> yes, other characters died, but but the world was saved and like the fold yeah. was destroyed. Yeah. So that was so there, there is as on a global picture, there is a happy ending. Like the the big bad evil thing was destroyed. Yeah. Um, but um, there you go. But uh, um, that's a really great observation, Ian. But I also wanted to ask Rachel because you read the other books in the in the in the franchise. Are there any books that take place? after this book or is this the last they all do, they all do. Wait, wait 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 i thought the six of crows and such were, were are they it's they take after. place after it's oh. after and it's a separate story so it's after sancta lena has died yes 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 um interesting and i actually am only i've only read half of the first king of scars book but so okay. the crow books takes place in ketterdam which is you know, across the fold and mm -hmm. uh, you've seen in the show. Mm -hmm. And so that's after the events, but will you see a familiar face in there? Or maybe. Um, and then mm. the, the next two, I think are par parallel-ish um, are about Nikolai. Very mm -hmm. interesting. And, and it's, and it's post this book, Nikolai. So it's not mm -hmm. like here he was when he was a, pirate privateer life it is he's now back from being a scary evil bat creature <laughs> and, yeah. and now here's this that's really interesting okay cool so in that case okay so just going back what did y'all think of the ending what did you think of the happy ending six i first six I, I'm, okay great Knox is reading six of crows now i really like the ending i thought it was really clever i thought it was uh yeah it was kind of safe but it was still like a you know it was sort of a uh, a, a, an ending that I expected for this type of story and I thought it was very well executed and I was engaged and invested with those characters by the end and the way everything sort of shook out I was like yeah that makes sense I'm buying it I'm into it I like the way that the that the fold was destroyed and that she gets to have kind of a weird sort of like Frodo ending where you know everybody in the world a very lackluster regular life where they don't yeah. really do anything yeah I was bothered yeah. by that Oh yep. no! Oh I well, that's. Oh Rebecca, really? You too, Rachel. Um, oh. With you, but I I get yeah. it a little bit more this time. God, I just realized my door is open anyway. Yeah, it's really creepy. I'm always expecting like a ghost to walk by. That's what you set it up for. The real creepy, kind of a. You can, come on, you can reach it. You can reach it. Oh my gosh! I think we have this. We've got the same chair. <laughs> We've got the same chair. <laughs> oh yeah, is it Wayfair? Or one of those? 
<laughs> it's similar. I think the cut's a little different, but yes, yeah, same color. Yeah. That's exciting. Gosh, so you know that the book was not exciting. If, well, Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, you know, the end of the book's not exciting. If Rachel, I'm excited about the fact that we have the same chair. <laughs> hey, you, hey, you guys are the ones that got distracted with the chair. I thought the ending was exciting enough. I thought it was good. So I like the ending overall of the, I liked the battle sequence and the end uh, some of that, but I completely agree with Rebecca that that was the ending I was hoping for was that like, they'd be able to let go of each other. I still feel like, but I, and so I agree with Maude and I wanna hear all of your thoughts, but the second time around, I think because I had sort of accepted that Alina in the books is a character I don't necessarily, I see a lot of things that I can understand. And I mean, I understand all of it, but I think the first time I was so into the world and some of the the characters and the idea that I was just like, this just feels kind of a letdown. But this time around, I was like, you know what? This is what they want. It's not what I would want, but it makes sense. It so she's gonna grow old now that she lost her Grisha powers? Well, she's, gonna, she's gonna grow old now that she's lost her Grisha powers? Yep, I'm, we're gonna I'm, grow old together. I will say though, it, yeah. in all the interactions um, that Mal had with the little kid, um, it makes sense because he was like giving out real good Papa vibes. So I kind of and they were orphan, you know, they were orphans themselves, and that was the family that they found. So like, I did, I do like that, and I think it's sweet. I was also just like, but Nikolai has this darkness inside of him, and he's way less evil than the Darkling, but she doesn't love him, so. You know yeah. who's, le who's less evil than the Darkling, and maybe even less evil than Nikolai, is Mal, I think, is probably the least evil. Well, yeah, but I'm just saying Nikolai <laughs> is uh, more interesting, doesn't yeah. get threatened by her power. It's like- I like Mal, I like Mal. I, I like him more the second time, but my mm -hmm. thought process the first time with little things where I was like, ah, was she, <laughs> Let's go of him to reclaim her power, mm -hmm. and then they end up spending together. the spend, and, and then, then they spend the rest of the book kind of undoing that. They spend the rest of the right. story, the whole, you know. but then it's like, and then yeah. the next one, he's like threatened and jealous, and even though she obviously chooses him, he doesn't even he starts rejecting her, and then in the third book. Mm -hmm. She's learning how to be a leader. She's learning how to regain, to control her power, to take everything she's learned from the Darkling, from mm -hmm. Nikolai, good and bad, obviously, and Nikolai and Mal and, all, and Bagra and all of these people that she's met. And then he's supposed to be sacrificed. And then she ends up with no powers, just like he wanted, so she can like grow. Like there was something the first time mm. I read it that just didn't sit super well with me, but the second time, look, feminism means you can choose whatever you want to do. It's not what I would do, but live your life, Alina, book Alina. Yeah. We'll see what happens in the show. It, especially because change it. you did remind me, Rachel, that like there's a section of the, of, uh, and I don't know which book it is because now all three of these have kind of blended <laughs> as one huge book for me, but there's a, a section of the story where she's like, well, I want to be the sun summoner. I want to be a Grisha. You know, I am embracing my powers. I like having these powers where I think in that same conversation, Mal was sort of of the perspective of like, these powers are bad because our lives are so different now and you're destined to do this thing or be this way or be at the palace or whatever it was, whatever his argument was. And whether it was valid or not, I think the takeaway for that conversation was that, again, Alina was like, no, I like this. I'm I have agency and I want to be this way. Again, it's just like the end of X-Men The Last Stand. Why am I bringing up this terrible movie? At the end of X-Men The Last Stand, there's a whole subplot in that movie about mutants and there being a cure for being mutants. And in and they did they did this in Marvel Comics as well. And the whole thing is that like that's bad and there shouldn't be a cure for being a mutant because there's supposed to be an analogy for like being a marginalized person. So there shouldn't be a cure for being a black person or a Latina person or 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 gay or short or disabled or whatever it is. There should be a cure for that. And then at the end of that third movie, they have Anna Paquin take the cure just so that she can make out with Iceman, Bobby, her boyfriend. And I'm like, I That's, mean, they shouldn't have done that. They should not no, have done they that. They shouldn't have done that. And yeah. also, 
don't trust. I mean, teenage, at least me as a teenager, don't trust me with any important decisions because I would make the wrong <laughs> point. <laughs> That's a good so. point. But like, but to bring it back to the to the shadow and bone story, it's like, is there, and I, I want to ask both of you too, is there a version of this story that, that uh, let's try to workshop it a little bit that I think that would have had more of a, um, like maybe you would have been more on board with because you're right, Rachel, like the ending of this and people in the chat really enjoyed it. And I thought it was good. Uh, but is there something that you would have enjoyed more that maybe would have like, you know, made Alina a little bit more of a, of a character who kind of had her own agency or I don't know, just, I want to open that up. Mod. Miss Penguin Supreme is taking the words out of my mouth. Miss, who, Miss Penguin Supreme. Yeah. Miss Penguin, yeah. Yeah. Why do women have to give up their power to be happy? I would love to have all my powers and still have my side hoochie. That is the story that we yeah. could have gotten. Uh, I actually really like if we scroll up a little bit to what John Adams said to Clever Girl. I was so, and this is where I feel as well. I was so sad for Mal. He lost something that had been intrinsic in him his all his life. Alina just lost a power that she only had for a year. And I want to say like, Good point. Mal really sacrificed everything from the start she got this sainthood she got this one ability that uh was the only thing that could kind of like um defeat the shadows uh was her light and he yeah. couldn't leave her and we understand that there's more of a force behind this than we first recognized but he wasn't allowed to leave her but he could never be with her and yet he continued to support her and was her rock and guided her throughout a lot of this sure he went on a little bit of a self-sabotage sidestep yeah. where he wanted to fight and feel something and have purpose or like he just felt like his worth was nothing and that's because he kept getting told and what is the what's the book's word for like non grisha just being a human starts with an o yeah it's oh. um oh gosh where did it's that like go? Or, 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 something. Or, something. or something yeah 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 that's yeah yeah, and they're, you know, even Zoe, oh, you're just an old Yeah, It's like, you know, mm -hmm. you're nothing, you're no one, you're no one. And that's why he goes, you know what? I am so no one that I have become a thing. I am a blade, I am a weapon. Like, I'm not even a person at this stage. So he got so degraded. And then we realize that he, <laughs> he is the amplifier and his life has to be sacrificed for her to get ahead. It's like he's sacrificed everything. Now he has to sacrifice his beating heart because, like, that for me sucks. And I... I was walking around my neighborhood listening to this part and as soon as there was that scene where they realized scene portion page where they realized that he's the amplifier i started crying i was like having big tears all around my neighborhood just being like this poor guy cannot catch a break and he just takes it in his stride because there's nothing else he can really do and like alina's kind of like i don't know how to handle this so i'll just kill myself and hopefully it's all over the amount of time she talks about wanting to end her life just to save either to save everyone else or because it was too hard even mm -hmm. when she had her final moments with like mal she's like i want someone to come in here and shoot us both that mm -hmm. would be easier and it's like mal ha had it so much harder see you you know he's walking around excited about the media shower and sees you arm in arm with nikolai like god he had it tough and then he was like all right cool now you have to kill me and then you know i think for me it would have been lovely for this guy who was told that he was nothing his whole life to actually amount to something in the end. And I think that Alina and um, Mal would have been so much better than Jenya and David for looking after the first or the second army or whatever that was. And I would have liked to have seen that, like they support Nikolai and are more of like a unified force instead of mm. kind of like, they're on some kind of a ruling council. They're 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 affecting the kingdom in some way. And it's interesting too because I'm or I'm hearing her or yeah, she could have masked her fate. Like had Jenya, yeah. you know, she could still she just her own that out. so effortless. She's like, no, it's too hard. Bye. I'm out. Go. And I and what? I think she does feel like she has been used by so many people, like in her own journey um and i agree with a lot of the chat i actually especially on the this read through i was like okay mel does i feel like he's much better overall in this book he's grown mm -hmm. a lot he's redeemed himself so i'm not a uh, full you know uh mel hater <laughs> as of the third book but yeah i just think they could have they could have done any any little bit you know even if it's not as strong um but i agree that taking that away from Mal is also a bummer. Yeah. But yeah. Mordsovo's wife was 
also not Grisha. So mm -hmm. that also adds to the kind of theory that he was working on this so that a powerful Grisha or he could use it and kind of even the playing field for everyone. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great point, by the way. Uh, say that again. Who? What? Necromancer makes a great point. I really wish, in hindsight, that Mallard had the same character development in the first two books than in the third books uh, than the third book gave him. Bardugo's growth as an author shows in Mal, but he suffered for it. Yeah, I agree about the Darkling too. I feel like this book is showing us kind of the the sad boy beneath the veneer, but because he's done so many horrible things already, and we haven't got received that kind of mm -hmm. has been very opaque. Mm -hmm. We don't know what to do. And we, I think you both were saying last week or the week before that it would just benefit from multiple points of view. Yes. And all of the other spinoff books do that. And the show yeah. follows different characters. So I think yeah. it does. There are a lot of elements to the series that I think, which is exciting for the show, uh, is that, you know, in retrospect, you're like, hmm, this stuff could be peppered in sooner. Yeah. And I could, you know, use some of the development that I, I did in the third book. Yeah. Um, that may, that makes sense. I think uh, uh, I, I want to bring this up too, because I watched the show and I had not, have not read the six of crows duology. No, I, I want but to I, I start straight away. I think, I I think from watching the first season of the show that I uh, like misunderstood and thought that those two books were, taking place at the same time as like the first book or the second book of the, of the Grisha trilogy of the shadow and bone trilogy. So I was like, Oh, okay. That's very interesting that Lee Bordugo went back and like showed you other characters and what they were doing kind of, uh, you know, behind the scenes. But now Rachel, you're telling me that those books actually take place after these three, because these three to me are the, this is the beginning, middle and end of the sort of story of this whole world. And I just assumed the third book's gotta be it. That's the ending of the whole thing. But and, and I think I was thinking that because of the way that Alina and Mal and their characters ended. Now, here's another thing I want to bring up, too. The whole motif behind this world is that, like, it's very Russian inspired, right? Mm -hmm. There's, like, the, the, the imagery, the, the, you know, the, the, the geography. It's very Russian, Russian inspired. Mm -hmm. And then I thought maybe that's why Lee Bardugo was leaning into this idea of, like, the sacrificial hero, the sacrificial hero. Because she made the main character part of a mythos of a saint because of that Russian you know, a uh, uh, cultural background and, and, and they're sort of saints, St. Saints, Saint Petersburg and all the different things in, in the history of Russia. So I went, maybe that's why Alina, the whole book is like, well, maybe I'll just die because then I'll be like, you know, a, a saint and I'll be, you know, I'll, I'll have saved the world in that way because of all the pressures that she was dealing with. And so at the end of this book, I feel like Lee Bardugo was almost fighting with her own uh, idea because she's like, I want to give Alina a happy ending, but there needs to be like, she needs to be the saint saint alina of this world mm -hmm. and to change the world in that way as well so i feel like that was i didn't it, and again it did not seem like a cop out that's not what i'm saying i felt like i was like oh this is actually a clever way to do this where she's going to fake her death they're going to get another body and at first she was weird about it but the person was like no she was a big believer like let her sacrifice be this way to kind of help mend the world it's the same as like you know we read star wars bloodline and like the world of star wars didn't know that darth vader's daughter was leia until we read this book and it's like, oh, the secret gets out. It's almost like yeah, this, yeah. It's, it, you know, it's almost like this um, uh, Da Vinci Code style secret of like, if, if, the, if the world learns about Jesus's bloodline, it'll change everything. So, so I thought that, that the idea behind the, the whole cultural inspiration for the world was that it was saints, saints, saints. And so this was Lee Bardugo being like, well, I'm going to make Alina and Mal kind of tragic characters because they will not be fully powered and still you know, affecting the world, they're going to retire and they're going to go live undercover on a farm somewhere, but they'll be happy with each other, but it'll still be bittersweet. It'll be sad. The world will go on. Yeah, and apparently I think that still, works. Yeah. She, cause she does these other books. And that, so, so now I'm kind of like, no, and I think I agree with both of you now more where I'm like, you should have made Alina still hold on to her power. And then maybe she could have been some kind of a presence or some character in these other books, but, but maybe Alina and Mal are not the hero characters that we're, putting them to be in our brains. Maybe they are more of these tragic teenager love lorn characters that should not have even been involved in any of this in the first place. And Lee Bardugo at the end of this, at the end of these three books place, it takes them off the board, if you will. Cause she's like, okay, you two are done. Let me yeah. focus on these other characters now and let's go from there. But, but again, I, this is all just speculation because I haven't read the rest of these books. This would be like me not knowing if there would be a, um, 
an Avatar series after Avatar The Last Airbender, the way that that cartoon show ends. But then we get a generation later, Legend of Korra. And I'm like, oh, I think this is super smart. Mm -hmm. It's really great. Because Avatar mm -hmm. feels, with that ending, feels like such an ending to the world. Mm -hmm. It feels like such a, that's it. They saved it. Well, it's over. I it's will, done. I will just say that, um, and we can talk about it more tomorrow, but the Crows books is, uh, are set in, in Ketterdam. So we do get um, a different kind of location. There's just mm -hmm. politically the aftermath of everything that's happened. And, you know, because there's Ketterdam, there's the Shuhan, there's Fyrda and Ravka. So there's that. And then the story for the crows is completely different in the books. So gotcha. in cool. my dream world, we would get shadow and bone season two. Maybe they'll, I don't know why they would do this. Uh, maybe they will, where they kind of intersperse them, but that and crows spin off with the actual mm. story from the books because it's, do you, do you remember when they planned that for um, the dark tower? They were like, we're going to do yes. a movie and then a TV show in between and then another movie. And then the movie came out and nobody really liked it. Um, no. But Marvel's doing it. They're doing the TV shows in between movies and that's really filling it out. So maybe we could get a Netflix TV show in between a TV show. That I would have be cool. Nerd, 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 nerdology, nerd analogy. And that yes. is, this is like the Grisha are your Jedi. Mm -hmm. And then now the crows are your scoundrels and your, you know, your Han Solo is yes. that yes. universe where it's like we've seen the magical powers and the Skywalker and that's great. But what else is happening in this mm -hmm. world? Yeah. And I like that. Exactly. <laughs> it's like what I would love to see Star Wars do when they get away from the, which they're doing a lot in the shows. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, we should, I, people are saying in the chat too, which is really nice that um, they've been enjoying reading a whole series through with us because we've often done like the first one. So locking yeah. that one away and also yeah. the pros. Absolutely. Uh, what else you guys want to talk about? I just wanted to get back to the, get, I wanted to skip to the ending, but we have so many different other things to talk about. So somebody else pick the next topic and, and we can talk about it. Madi? The next one it says here is, you can just pick anything. What, what did you think? Or talk about whatever you want to talk about. Bagra's sacrifice. So obviously, mm. uh, Portia, in the second half of the last book, we heard the truth behind who Bagra is. We knew that it was a Darkling's mother, but the fact that she, uh, Moritzova, was her father. So technically, it was her sister's children that created Mal's mm -hmm. line. Yep. I'm going to need a family tree. Yeah, it's a bit complex, but I, I understand the We're notion. We're going to be missing like a thousand years of people, but yes. I think we can just do Skip. more of his, his non grisha wife, Bagra, Lil Sis, who we think dies, but she doesn't, Darkling, and then many, many, many people. Yeah. <laughs> and then gotcha. Now. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. Um. I, I want to tie this in with the other Bagra question that was in here, which was uh, Bagra raising uh, the Darkling and, like, the way that she spoke about it because she, you know, killed her sister. Mm -hmm. her Accidentally. Mother, mm -hmm. Her mother thought that she was, you know, a freak and despised her. And the fact that she saw her mum basically die in the woods and she had to, like, leave her mum to die. yeah. yeah. She wanted to procreate, <laughs> literally in those sort of like layman's terms, where it was like it didn't matter who the father was, it was just to procreate. And then raised her son to not feel love, to not, you know, to protect himself, the fact that his power was important. And she created this monster. And then I think that's why, you know, and she's always been a little bit of a, her arc, she's just so angry um but still trying to help like those beautiful vulnerable moments where she's yelling at um Nikolai and then Alina's like wait you like him <laughs> but um, the fact that she kind of like sacrificed herself by just kind of throwing herself off the balcony I was kind of like if she's if these are her children the Volcra and the what are they yeah. called uh the um oh gosh I have something it Russian yeah <laughs> You are right about that. Uh, <laughs> I hear them all through the Nichi, Nichivoya. Nichivoya. Yes. Ah, oh, yes. The Nichivoya. Nichivoya. <laughs> the fact that the Nichivoya were like, 
still around her. And she's like, like calls to like. See, they're mm -hmm. my children too. It would have been cool if she jumped off and then like, whoo. <laughs> <laughs> One of them kind of like swept her up a little bit because it just seemed, I don't know. I thought bit, of it as her sort of, when we interact, when Alina interacts with her, she doesn't want to help her. She only saves her or does anything with her to try and save her son's humanity. And so I think I sort of, especially the second time kind of interpreted this as she's saying that to get close to him, but she tries to bring them down with her to, you know, give Alina a chance to get away because the wow. only way to save her son is to keep him from doing, doing all of, all of this. And maybe Alina is her kind of last hope for, mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. She never got to know that, you know, who Mal was. She kind of like recognized that it that. though. Yeah. She was like, Sounds like Papa. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sure that she knew everything was going to be okay because she was a tragic mentor figure in a YA story. I'm sure that would, before she died, she was like, um, I think, I think this Miriam world. Zipped, you know. zipped Dumbledore and he fell to his death as well. Yeah. Um, but I also think she's, she's a subversion of that trope because she oh, is definitely. a completely um, resistant. She actually tries to every single time talk Alina out of, Mm -hmm. the the training that she's mm -hmm. basically giving herself because Bagra is like, no, don't do this. And I don't think she's very hopeful. And so I think for her, it's like he maybe he is lost. I'm maybe I'll go with him and maybe this, you know, silly girl can can still do something. Mm -hmm. That's sort of how I interpreted it. I don't think uh, Nicole had a good. Uh, I'm I'm totally. Hector, you continue because I'm gonna pivot. You're go oh, you're gonna pivot. I was just gonna say, Bagra felt like um, is if instead oh, of old nice. Uh, <laughs> Whoa! What was that? Oh wow, that's crazy. I just had my buddy Bucky fall off of the uh, my shelf over here. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh no, that's... not Bucky. No, the Winter Soldier just fell from my shelf. <laughs> no reason. Yeah, that's weird. I don't oh, know boy. why, but because it fell so quickly, for some reason, I thought it was a giant spider. Oh, that's crazy. Like, no, the, no, like arachnophobia. The giant, yeah, the giant spider. <laughs> this is a toy. The giant spider's on your shoulder, actually. I can no, see it right now. It's no. uh, in your hair. It's right no, there. No, uh, no. I'm going to get I'm going to get it. They're going to come out. <laughs> they're going to come out with a new. <laughs> They're gonna come out with a new short hair Bucky, so I'm gonna get that toy and and swap this boy out. But there you go, he fell. Um, I was about to say that uh, Bagra felt like instead of um, <laughs> nice, sweet old Obi Wan Kenobi finding Luke Skywalker, if it was like a uh, witch sister of Dathomir that found Luke Skywalker instead, that would have been great. It would have been cool. Uh, oh, Mod, what were you gonna say? Oh, I want to talk about Nikolai's closure or oh, lack of. Cool. He turned into a Nikchevs. Yeah. He kind of <laughs> looked like he looked like a actually I think it says it looks Nichevoya. Um, looks more like a Volcra, which is because they're yeah. less he's got that but physical energy. But this was also a follow-up question I had. Do you think, or this was the first I guess it's more of a comment, but the first thought I had when they kind of describe what he looks like when he comes to see her and she can kind of see more clearly and he's taken over by the darkness is it still looks like him, but he has mm -hmm. horns and claw talons and wings and all of that. And I was like, is that what the first Volcra looked like? Yeah. Like gen one Volcra still yeah. look like people. And then I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to apply logic to fantasy and fiction. Sure. But why is it that, and this is like, a, this is actually a bit of a, uh, a vampire trope as well. This whole, no, you can fight it because it's me and our love and you'll never hurt me. And it's like, no, they're a monster. But why is it that um, when th an average person gets turned, they're done. But when it's a main character, <laughs> they're mostly fine. Mm -hmm. Like oh, he, was aware, he was aware the whole time and he figured out that, you know, the son can cure him and he didn't really hurt anyone. And it's Well, we've like never seen anyone turned into that before. Mm -hmm. So I think that was kind of what I was saying was like, maybe when the fold first. Called plot armor. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, I, that's what was going to be my answer to you of like overall, it is plot armor. But um, the <laughs> basically like um, if when the fold when he first created the fold, how do we know that the the Volcra didn't still have their memories? But yep. Or especially like everyone around you, you're in darkness. You've turned into a monster. You don't know what's going on or have any context, and you're fighting off those urges because he does almost attack Alina a few times. Yeah. And so that was sort of how I viewed it as like, this is like pre-evolution Volcra where they maybe still had some of their- Maybe uh, if, uh, if if Alina and everybody weren't able to change the world and save the world, if he would have stayed a Volcra longer and longer and longer, he just would have gone completely, he would have been lost. But you're right, Rachel, maybe it's because that character and any person who gets turned to a Volcra today the present day of the story, they have the context of, I know what it is. I know what a Volker is. I know what the fold is. Oh my gosh, it's me. I'm turning into a Volker. Let me try to fight it. I'm still in here somewhere versus gen one. People were like, what's happening? This is crazy. Mm -hmm. What's going on? Whoa, check out these wings. I'm an evil monster. Nobody can save me. And I've been this way for hundreds of years. I don't know. Do they mm -hmm. live forever? I don't I, know. I would, I would, I would love an encyclopedia of this world more so than any other <laughs> book. I would love like a breakdown of like, here are the rules. Here's what they look like, like a, like a D and D monster book or something like that. Where that and would they don't cool. have, they, I think that those are built, especially in each book, they're built as a little bit as she's going, which can yes. work obviously in, in mm -hmm. storytelling, but I think the jump, um, and it's a testament to her her skill improving, you know, rapidly, I think, through the writing, but um, mm -hmm. that she's now developed that in the other books and now we'll have the show as well. But I think that's that's another flaw that gets solved a little bit more closer to the end of how things work. And you don't have to know how everything works. Like it doesn't, <laughs> no, I know, don't invade, uh, they're, there are people who got turned into creatures, but here's the other thing. If Jen, <laughs> a weird train of thought, if the first generation of Volcra are still kind of people and they're a little bit, at least aware, then the Volcra breed and they evolve into this thing. Oh, right? so you're saying they're having babies. You're saying the Volcra are in there and then they get yeah, together. Yeah, they have and a nest, remember? They I guess you're right. I guess so. That sucks. I mean, so then, are they all immortal? Like, I don't know. That's we don't yeah. know. I'll have to find I, out. Do Grace have thoughts anywhere? Thoughts anywhere? Yeah. Say that again, Mud. Well, I was like, Grisha, like they're procreating as well because that's what Bagra did. She was like, you, yeah. boom, yeah. baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but the Volker like, are big, really... bad creatures. I mean, they're I don't kind know. of vultury. Yeah. When they say Volker's... nest, do they mean? That's where they have their babies, or just that's yeah. where they go and sleep. Uh, and then... Book number there two, were baby ones. Oh, there were baby one. Yeah, there yeah. were baby ones in the second one. Yeah. But were those baby ones baby humans that were turned, or were they Volcra that two Volcra got together know. and they're like, let's have sex and make more Volcra? And then if, uh, if humans that had if Nikolai can be turned from a Volcra back to a human, could that process not work on a pure born Volcra? Would they turn well, into a didn't, human? She didn't try hard enough, did she? She could have found that out. Maybe in a future book. I don't know if Rachel's smiling because that's something that's covered no, later. No, I'm know. just smiling because I'm just like, I don't know if we'll ever know. But I, yeah. I <laughs> Maybe. my kind of theory is that, you know, also, Nicola, like, is there a difference between creating the shadow fold and the creatures inside of it and then right. using your own dark power to kind of possess and transform someone? So maybe he's the first, or at least the first okay. in this generation. The Darkling's yeah. probably done that to someone else before. Yeah. But, I, uh, I, I, I just don't want him and Zoya to end up together. She's just so awful. Like, still, sorry, I know, but she like owns yeah, the awfulness. And, and, but and like, Nikolai? I just, yeah, Nikolai is such a doer, and Zoya won't even help put up a tent. Like, that is not the kind of teamwork I am here for. <laughs> I wish she'd be the first to go. If there was a Volker coming, I'd be like, get rid of it. <gasps> Yeah, I there is a uh, uh, <laughs> they would not have sent babies across the fold. It's not even something adults want to do. I know, but the fold expanded over villages. Yeah, yeah. In so the that's, second, that's, yeah, that's the, the thing. Book. I'm like, 
maybe that's how that happened. Uh, there's a question here in our <laughs> script. Uh, thank you so much, Rebecca. Really appreciate it. There's a, there's a question here in our script. Would you be interested in a book about Morozova and the early Grisha? I think I would be interested in, I wasn't joking about some kind of an encyclopedia or guide mm -hmm. with just all the information we know up to this point. I would be interested in pretty much any book. I'm interested in the in the Six of Crows books. I'm interested in the Nikolai books. But like, if there was a book about, oh, here's the early Grisha, hundreds of years, thousands of years ago, whatever it is, that would probably be pretty interesting. I think this, here's my pitch. Do a story about two characters, one who is good, one who is bad. And then the fold happens and then the good one gets turned into a Volcra and the bad one is still a human on the outside, and then just tell the story over thousands of years or whatever, and then that that Volcra ends up getting turned back into a human or something. Like something like that would be interesting, like a super yeah. long live, like Volcra's perspective. That's all I'm saying. That's what I want, I want to read that. <laughs> oh, or you could do um, uh, the little, uh, Bagra's little sister, because we yeah. only know a little bit about her, so we don't know. She broke the neck of the swan. She's. I, I'm not saying she's necessarily a good character, but I'm just saying that I think that could be interesting because then you could show, um, or it could be like her, you know, descendant or something like that who does have some kind of, I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not I a show runner. runner. I don't know. TV mm -hmm. shows. Uh, Shizzy, that would be great too. I would be down for that. Um, I think there's lots of, just to tie this into this next point too here in the script, this is a great question, Rachel. Ruin and Rising offers a lot more context as to how the Grisha have been treated for generations as witches, as saints, as monsters, all ending in their mistreatment and often execution. Does this change your views of the Darkling? I think it did. And I think we were kind of talking about that earlier. Like there is a little bit more sympathetic writing done for the Darkling's backstory in this. And like Miss Necromancer said earlier in the chat, like I'm sure people feel that kind of stuff I think would have been happily welcomed by us if it was maybe a little bit more sprinkled in books one and two, you know, it yeah. really does feel like, I think out of all of them, book three is my favorite. I probably enjoyed it the most. I think the writing was the strongest. I think the, um, if I had any critiques, negative critiques about book three, I felt like throughout the story that maybe characters were joking a little bit too much. Like there's a little bit too much of, they go to, through a crazy situation, they get together and then they kind of tease each other and poke fun at each other when they're at a fire, fire pit. A team. I know they are becoming a team, but I was like, okay, I get this, but I feel like y'all are doing it just a little bit too much. Let's, let's stick to brass tacks. There is a lot of danger happening in the world. <laughs> I needed that. They're, they're all so exhausted. Yeah. Like Zoya and the other Nadia is Nadia the other squalor, but keep mm -hmm. that whole ship going for, and they can't take breaks or they just sink. Like, I think, I think everyone is frustrated, understandably, but, but especially when they're looking for the firebird, because the clues just kind of, you know, disappear. There's no, they're like, where are we going? They're all exhausted and traumatized. They're just all at a breaking point, I think. And because we know that Alina cares so much, but she's trying so hard to be tough. And I did really like that Mal is like, you got to be vulnerable and open up. Meanwhile, the Darkling is basically like, I will kill everything that you love until you are my, like, till you have nothing left, which is like abuser 101. Yeah. <laughs> just just uh, a little more exposition than they usually do. They usually just do that. Um, but I, I liked that in that she she does take the bad some of the bad advice from the darkling and uses it herself to kind of toughen up a little bit because you know in this situation you kind of have to but I I think I loved Mal telling her like just let like their people your people were bonding it's the end of the world potentially again like let's talk about or you can let them know you can grieve. Hmm. Team Mal. Game Wizard, yes. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> I said that in one of the previous episodes. Uh, um, and I agree, too, that um, that it, the ends does not justify the means for the Darkling. Mm -hmm. I just think you go, like, for me in the first book, he goes to, to like, okay, you're clearly a villain villain. Um, and you... 
I think in the second book, if there had been a little bit more of that, and even at the end, mm -hmm. like a little bit more ambiguous of the fine, make me your villain kind of attitude, because I think that idea would work really well in terms of Alina being like, wait, mm -hmm. did I, you know? Yeah. And then he ends up still being very bad because he's gaslighting her and, and horrible and just murdering everyone and, and obsessed with power. But I thought it was also great that he's so angry and anguished when she loses her power because he has been alone his whole life. And again, mm -hmm. not an excuse at all. Mm -hmm. bad i may think he's very handsome and tough, <laughs> but like he's a bad guy um but yeah i just i thought he was so much more fleshed out in this and i wish we'd seen more of that sooner okay Honestly, let's go the, ahead yeah halfway through the second book when alina was still drawn to him it didn't connect with me i mm. didn't understand that there was no that compulsion that she had towards him, he'd racked up so many shit evil points yeah. that like for me, there wasn't enough. And I, I remember talking about it a couple of episodes ago where it's just like, I'm not understanding why she's still going to him and what that sort of like draw card is when she's surrounded by really good guys that she's championing. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, that, yeah. Ha that's, that happens a lot. A lot but have, of yeah. Life. Not to me, but, it doesn't. You don't get some chances. You get two in <laughs> Since you felt that mod, you have seen the show, right? So you've seen the Ben Barnes version of the Darkling in in in, in live action. You've you've seen him, you've seen his mouth. Yes. So you would. That's what you texted us, right? That's what you texted us, right? That you were just staring at his mouth the entire show. Is that what it was? Okay. Folks, stay tuned for our bonus episode on Friday, where oh we're going to get into so Ben Barnes. Right now. That's it. Yeah. Yes. Well, okay. and we'll, we'll also talk about the know, map room. <laughs> all the other stuff, but or also how show Mal also, yes, yeah, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. Jasper forever. Oh, uh, Jasper, my... they're all incredibly good looking. The entire cast is, uh, yeah. I, I forget who tweeted it. It's like the whole cast is a smoke show, every oh, single yeah. person is so attractive. It's fantasy, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're running out of time, so I want to see if we want to talk about any last thoughts. Uh, MFK, we got Darkling, we got Mal, we got Nikolai. Let's do it. We finally read all the books. We're ready. We have the most information. Who are we emming? Who are we Can effing? I... Who are we paying? Oh, kill Darkling. Thank you. Thank you. Wait. Mal. Yeah. I was going to ask, I'm going to save it for the oh, Nikolai, but like a handful of times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah sure it's at least one time mod it's at least one time i think i agree with you mod i think that's going to be my mfk as well rachel what's yours so what's your question <laughs> thank you can you can you ny x-wing thank you as a character before you oh, know that wow. they're bad and then kill them sure 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 okay you can even uh, <laughs> oh, 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 wait, you just hang on. I misunderstood. You're trying to add an F to the K is what you're trying to do. No, I'm afraid that that's, uh, you know what? That's entirely up to you. I guess in this magical that's scenario, the K I would mean, mean that you're. What parameters even, are there? Because okay, it was, I'll set it up like this. <laughs> when you pick a character to be K, to be killed, you are somehow magically given the tools you need and you are close enough to them that you can kill that person. What you do up until that, that's no, up to you, Rachel. So like you can. Right before, I'm saying. No, like, no, not right before. Maybe like 45 <laughs> minutes. I don't know. Maybe like. <laughs> uh, I, can, I cannot believe. I was going to say K. that. So when we're uh -huh. done. F to K. F to K. Very nice. No, Very nice. it was more so like in book one before we know that the Darkling is evil, you have one yes. choice for your F M K. Yes. And then by the end of the book, that's changed, yep. so then you can K the person you make. Yeah. I'm seeing a lot of M Mal's, a lot of F uh, Nikolai's, and a lot of K Darklings. I think I think I agree with that. I, yeah, I would. Agree. I would. The marry, upper hand. Yeah, I would kill him if it's. Yes. I need nah. Mary Nikolai. Wait, no. Oh. Mary, uh, no one. Oh. And yeah, Ray from nowhere. Ray from nowhere. That's right. That's right. Mary, Mary no one. one. <laughs> Friends with Mal. Friends with F. 
for a, open, a while. <laughs> open, open a business with Nikolai. Oh, F for a while with Nikolai. Okay, great. Okay, great. Cool. <laughs> you no, know, we don't have to get married, but like po maybe pre a, a really post powerful, Volcro like with the claws, with a, a really close yeah, long term relationship, but ultimately it probably doesn't work out. Okay. Okay. Can I can I F um, Nichevoya Nikolai? <laughs> yeah, man. You do whatever Thank you want. Thank you for saving me from myself. <laughs> take, it, take, it to the, bonkers comment. take it to the skies, Maude. That's right. Take it to the skies. A whole new world. <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. That's great. That's great. Yeah, like great. Long shame here at book club. Nope. <laughs> Except. We kink no, no, I, would, I, could marry, I could marry Nicolai quite easily. He's very charming. I I will also say, and I do want to talk about it more on the after show, but apparently there is a like new genre um, that's kind of, uh oh, it's not this book, but I would say like Throne of Glass um, is like that. And it's called New Adult. And it's basically mm. like YA, but like more adult themes, more sexy times. Ooh. And it's like ages, you know, 16, 17 to 30. And I may be a couple of years old. I mean, obviously you can read it when you're old, but like, yeah, 35, we'll say 30. No, I'm going to say like till forever because I don't know if I'm going to, you know. Um, but I think it's really interesting that that's sort of a, cause sometimes it is true with some YA you're like, okay, really? They, they just gazed at each other longingly, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Not <laughs> the worst for it on their honeymoon. And it was like, and then we went to bed. And the next morning, we went to bed. The next morning, I'm like, there is a chapter missing here. I waited there three and a half books, and you're not going to tell me what happened? That's mm -hmm. why uh, Fifty Shades of Grey was invented, for exactly no. this reason. Exactly. Yeah, I, no? I got through three chapters of that book, and I could I, I will it. write a dissertation on it for you, because that book <laughs> got made for very different reasons than include <laughs> fanfic and Twilight. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, we have uh, a bit of an announcement. Um, yeah. So we are going to move Nerdist Book Club to a monthly schedule. Don't worry, we're not going away. There are other ways that we're going to be chatting, but we're going to cover one book over one potentially supersized episode a month. Um, and our next book is A Princess of Mars by Edgar Rice Burroughs. Hector has been so lovely and patient with a lot of <laughs> YA and a lot of fantasy. So we did a poll just for him. And it all polls. You want to point out two polls because it was uh Twitter and on yeah. YouTube. And when that was and, contabulated, yeah. And we really want to cover um a queer story in June for Pride, but we are gonna read Murderbot at some point because it was very, very close. So please don't think that your vote doesn't count because it does and we hear you. Um, mm -hmm. So your homework is to read A Princess of Mars and join us Wednesday, May 26th for our full breakdown. But we're not going anywhere. You can keep chatting with us. Like I said, um, use hashtag Nerdist Book Club. You can tweet at us. You can do all of the normal things or you can join the Nerdist Geek Bomb or no, the Geek Bomb Discord. Wow. Nerdist and Discord in my head. I was trying to get all the information out in a concise way. And my brain was like, no, no, I say I, no. So tell us about this word, Mom, and I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> well, we, because it is going once a month, we are going to still have that conversation happening over at Geek Bombs Discord under the hashtag reading portion. So nothing's changing there. This is the best place to kind of like put your updates and the books that you're reading and chatting about that. Uh, I think we're also going to continue somewhat the weekly discussions and so we can kind of talk about it if you guys submit a question. We're still kind of workshopping all of that. So we also have a hashtag feedback section there. If you've got great ideas on how we can utilize that, I'd love to hear it too. Mm -hmm. But then after this, we're going to do our Q&A where we do the call after the shows where if you guys have a cool statement or a uh, question that you want to ask, we actually have a verbal discussion in a voice call and that is happening. If you want to get involved in that side of like the book club, the community side where we chat with each other on it. Uh, all you have to do is sign up for the $5 a month Patreon perk over at patreon.com slash geek bomb. And we'll see you there throughout the week. And we'll see you there right after this too. Yeah. So, and if I can I just jump in real quick too about princess of Mars, because uh, I love this book and it is a very old book. And I would like to let everybody watching right now know, as well as 
Maude and Rachel uh, uh, and Lee and Allie that um, it's a book that was first written in 1912. And it is kind of the DNA of a lot of science fiction, and it's very pulpy. So in an effort to try to give the book the best possible shot it could have with you as a reader, uh, oh, yeah. also, this doesn't mean to say that you must enjoy it, that you have to enjoy it. I'm really looking forward to the entire discussion that we're going to have, good and bad, and all of that 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 entails in a month when we reconvene and talk about this book. So Eve, there's just so much to talk about, trust me. But I normally, I know I'm normally of, of this stance, and I Try not to bring it up too often, but I'm normally a you should watch no, the movie okay. or TV show guy before the book. I'm normally the you should watch the movie before the book guy. Um, but in the case of this book, Princess of Mars, John Carter, I'm going to say if you feel like you might not be into the book, for the love of God, watch the movie first. Please watch the movie. <laughs> watch the movie. It's on Disney+. Plus. It's called John Carter. It's a super generic title. It came out in 2012. It came out almost 10 years ago. Watch oh, it yeah, and then... Yeah, and then read the book, and then hopefully will help inform some of what they were. Because I think the, the movie-to-book comparison, watching the movie first, I think, addresses and fixes a lot of the stuff that is bad about the book. Do you know what I'm saying? So I yeah. just want to give everybody watching the best possible experience. Yeah. But when we come back in a month, we're going to discuss this book. I've got two copies of it right here. Look at this. i got this John Carter book mm. right here. Wow. That has that's the not the novelization of the movie. That's it the is. It is, plus it has Princess of Mars, so it's oh, both. Oh, okay. And, very interesting, and then I have this, which is the first three John uh, Carter books oh, in cool. one in one uh, wow. fat edition here that uh, Disney put out in 2012. But nobody liked the movie and nobody likes these books. So thank you, <laughs> Nerdist Book Club, for going on this journey with me. I promise our next episode is going to be real fun. Yeah. So read, enjoy, and for the love of God, even if you don't watch the movie, you have to listen to the Michael Giacchino score from the movie while reading the book. Please, I am begging you, go to the Discord, <laughs> go to the Geek Bomb Discord, because I'll drop a link in there for where you can just click on Spotify and listen to the music. Thank okay. you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> This for I wish I was that uh, cycle when we we're doing Name of the Wind. This yeah. Friday, um, which is the 30th of April, join us at 1 p.m. Pacific for our full breakdown of Netflix's Shadow and Bone Season 1. We will be live on uh, Notice YouTube, Facebook, and Geek and Sundry's Twitch, so make sure you go lock that in. I know it's during the work week, but use your lunch break. would love to chat with you about that. It's going to get thirsty. Anyway, thank you so much. We'll see you over at the after show. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks, Hector. One last thing, Rachel. Bye. I've got it. See ya. <laughs> My brain just stopped. Da, da, da.